Hello, this is Mr. McMurray, and we're here talking about membranes, along with my uh, friend here, the dummy. Uh, we will bring her on here in a little bit. But first of all, uh, let's talk about a little bit about membranes and why are they important. Well, obviously, we have cell membranes and other membranes, uh, but we also have membranes in our body, not just our cell membranes, but um, that control um, the edges or the boundaries, if you will, uh, between our different organs, what can come in, what can come out. Some secrete things out, some absorb things, some filter things, some are just there to protect us, uh, or we secrete things like mucus and stuff that help protect us from bacteria and so forth. So uh, without any further ado, let's get right into it, and here we go. All right, so um, the first type of membrane we have is cutaneous. Cutaneous just is your skin. All right, you may have heard the word subcutaneous fat. Sub means below, so that would be the fat below your skin. Okay, so the cutaneous membrane is just your skin. It is a dry membrane. It's the only dry membrane pretty much we have. Now, that's not saying you will not secrete oil on it. That helps protect it, um, and then we wash it off with soap, so we have to put hand lotion on to put the oils back into our hands. Um, and it will sweat when you get hot in order to cool it back down. But for the most part, it is considered a dry membrane. It's not always uh, moist, not always coated with something, okay? Uh, unlike the other membranes that we will talk about, all right? Uh, mainly, it provides protection. Uh, our outer layer of cells are completely dead cells packed full of proteins, just little protein packets. There is no nucleus anymore. There is no organelles. They're dead. All right, your top layer is dead. You're coated with dead cells, okay? Uh, that's just the way it is. Now, because it is a tough protein coat, keratin, um, it protects us from things. Most things that get on our skin, you know, you see acid, oh, it just melts people's skin and stuff. But generally speaking, that's not what happens, okay? As long as you wash stuff off your hands, uh, they really are protective against most things. Also, mechanical damage when we get hit and bumped into things. Uh, we don't bruise and just bleed and all stuff automatically. It helps protect us with that. As people get older, their skin gets thinner and doesn't have that fat layer underneath it and stuff like that. And so it doesn't protect as much. And they bruise really easily or they cut and tear their skin really easy. And it's hard for it to, to heal up sometimes. Okay, that's mechanical damage being hit. All right, And probably the biggest thing is bacteria. Um, we have a great wall of skin. And so the Great Wall of China, we have the Great Wall of Skin that helps protect our body and keep uh, bacteria and stuff out. That's why anytime you get a cut, you should put uh, antibiotic ointment on it so that it can uh, kill any of the bacteria that get in. Uh, some bacteria that are on our skin are fairly harmless on our skin, but if they get inside, uh, then they are dangerous and they can do damage uh, and, and cause a lot of problems. Staph infections you hear about, those are just bacteria that are normally found on our skin, but once they get into our skin, underneath our skin, they can be really bad. All right. Now, we have another set of membranes known as serosa, is the big fancy word for it, or we would call it serous membranes. So if someone asks, are you serious? You can say, no, but my membranes are. Okay, or no, I'm Mr. McMurray, but my membranes are. Okay, whatever, depending on how much of a smart aleck you want to be. Of course, you wouldn't say Mr. McMurray because, well, you get the idea. Okay, anyhow, uh, so serosa or serous membranes, okay? These are membranes that are wet, okay? They're always coated with some sort of moisture or mucus or something like that. Uh, not so much mucus, but more wet substances and fluids that line the body cavities or cover the outside surface of organs. All right, and now is where my dummy gets a chance to say. Okay, hang on, the uh, thing took off there. But, okay, so this is our dummy here. I don't know if you can see, this is her stomach and stuff. Here's her liver, and her stomach is up here, and, and this is back stuff here. Now, her intestines just fell out. <laughs> Instead of irritable uh, bowel syndrome, she has uh, coming loose bowels. Okay, yeah, this is her intestines and everything. Okay, so if we were to take the intestines out, if you see the wall, the back wall here that all these organs are in, that would be... A serous membrane that would be the body cavity and it would line the body cavity all right now there's also membranes on the outside of these organs okay and those clear membrane on the outside of the organs is also serous so you have serous serous now when your organs are in here they rub against the wall the organs rub against the wall but since this is slick and this is slick and they're both moist then it's going to slide there and it allows them to slide without getting a whole lot of uh, friction, okay? And that's very important. Um, uh, 
Yeah, for some reason my uh, thing's not working here, so let me see if I can get to working. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got kind of carried away there. Okay, so their job is to reduce the friction between the organs when they're in this cavity here, and when they move against it, when you move around and stuff like that, they slide between each other and between the the um, wall. Okay, and so we say uh, there's also fluid that's secreted that keeps them moist and wet, and that just makes it even slicker or kind of lubricates it so that they don't rub on each other. Okay. And it reduces friction between the parietal, we'll talk about that in a minute, the wall membrane and the organ membranes or visceral membranes, and also between the organs rubbing on each other and stuff, okay, because obviously they're all there together. So they don't want to stick and catch on each other. That would be very, very painful, all right? Now, uh, types of serous membranes, all right, let's break it down a little bit here. Um, first one is called parietal. We talked about that. Parietal means wall. And it's just the wall or the cavity, the lining of the cavity. Think about the wall. This is a room here with all your organs in it. Then the walls would be lined with this nice slick uh, cavity. So those are parietal. All right. Now, each of the organs has their own little coating around it. The liver has a coating around it. The stomach has a coating around it. Kidneys, you can see them kind of back here maybe. Uh, they have a coating around them. The intestines have a coating around them. And so these are called visceral. Visceral just means guts. Okay, and so uh, these are the serous membranes that cover the outer surfaces of your various organs, okay? And so these are visceral. Now, for parietal and visceral, we can divide it down a little bit more into, depending on which body cavity they are in, okay? And let me take this off real quick so we can see all the body cavities we have. There we go. Wouldn't it be nice if we all had removable, uh, yeah, just to make it a whole lot easier for the surgeons to do their work and stuff. But, okay, so I'm going to take the um, liver and heart out. And you can maybe see the heart and lungs up there. Maybe not. I can't tell. Okay. All right. Heart and lungs are up here. All right. Now, um, if it's around the lungs, around the lungs up here, that is called pleura. Think plural. It sounds like plural. It doesn't. Have, I don't know that it has anything to do with uh plural, but you have two lungs, or plural, so you have two, so it's it's a lung cavity. So pleura has to do with the lungs, and these are just membranes around the lungs, okay? Now, if we were to look on the back side of the chest, where the rib cage is, that would be parietal, because it's around the wall, or the body cavity, around the lungs, okay? So that would be a parietal pleura, all right? Now, if we actually touch the surface of the lungs, we would be touching the visceral, because it's around the organ, all right, so the visceral uh, membrane, okay? Now, um, visceral pleura, sorry, that'd be visceral pleura because it's around the organ, so visceral around the organ and pleura because it's around the lungs, all right? Now, the heart is in the same thoracic cavity, but it's kind of separated and covered up by the lungs, so it's in here, and it has its own little, um, not body cavity, but it has a sac around it. Unlike this one here, it shows you the heart. There would actually be a sac around the heart, and you can't see the actual heart until you cut through that sac. That sac is called the pericardium. Para means around, cardium means heart, so it's just a membrane going around the heart. And the outside membrane around it would be the pericardium, and that would be the parietal pericardium, okay? Now, if you actually touch the surface of the heart, which we could if we cut through that, and now you can touch the heart, that would be the visceral pericardium. Okay, or the outside layer of the heart. All right. Now, um, we also have all these organs down here in the abdominal pelvic, and we said that's where everything is almost. Okay, so uh, it's all this stuff, and so para means around. So there's a membrane going around this, but it's called the peritoneum. Toneum just means around all of it. So all around. So the thing that goes all around this cavity down here, where all our guts is, that is going to be the peritoneum. Okay. Now, once again, if it's lining the body cavity around the edges and top and bottom and front and everything, then that would be the parietal peritoneum. And if we're actually talking about uh, the membranes uh, the, on the outside of the liver or the stomach or the intestines or whatever, that would be visceral peritoneum. Okay. So if it's in the lung cavity, it is pleura. If it's around the wall, it's bridal, visceral, if it's actually the outside of the lungs. Heart, pericardium, is a sac around it, 
the outside surface of the heart is the visceral pericardium. And then all this organs down here, the covering of the organs is the visceral peritoneum, and the wall lining would be the parietal peritoneum. All right, so it's all around the abdominal pelvic cavity. Now, another set of membranes are called the mucosa or mucous membranes. So you have serosa and you have mucosa, not mufasa, that's a whole different thing, but mucosa. All right, mucous membranes, which guess what? They have mucus or other substances wet on the surface. That's why they are wet cavities also. All right, and they are wet cavities that line the inside of organs that are exposed to the outside world, okay? Now, if I take this stomach and I pull it apart, that lining on side of the stomach, okay, this was the outside of the stomach, now we're on the inside, that lining is actually a mucous membrane or a mucosa. Why? Because it is exposed to the air. Going through the stomach, all the way up through the esophagus, up through the mouth, it opens into the outside world. And so all the way through your throat and your stomach and your intestines, all the way out to your poop in the anus, that is going to be an outside surface. It's exposed to air, as is your lungs. Going down to the inside of your lungs would be a mucous membrane uh, inside your urinary tract inside your reproductive organs okay there's a tube opening to the outside so it's all going to be mucus lined mucous membranes things that are exposed outside to air okay and so anything any opening your eardrum for example in the inside of your ear opens from the mouth into the inside of your ear so that would be considered an external surfaces all right now their functions of this mucus is one to protect because you basically these are outside layers, even though they're inside your body, they're still an outside layer of your surface of your body. And so they need to be protected, they need to stay moist, so they don't dry out. Okay, that helps protect them. Uh, they have secretions. If it's like your stomach, they're going to be secreting stomach acid and things like that inside the stomach there. So they're going to secrete different things. Uh, if it's a pancreas, it secretes pancreatic juices, okay, and hormones and various things like that. Okay, filtration, if it's like in your kidneys back up in here, they're going to... Um, filter out, by the way, that's your pancreas, your, your uh, kidneys are going to filter out the blood and get all the liquid part of the blood filtered out of urine and waste products and too much salt and all that kind of stuff. Uh, also absorption, if you're down in the intestines down here, then as you cut this open, they're going to absorb. This is where the food gets absorbed and water gets absorbed back into your body. Okay, and so that's their kind of function. All right, and that's all mucosa. Now the last one, I don't have a picture here, uh, is synovial. Actually, I guess we could turn it sideways here, but I don't know. Let's see if I knock something off my desk instead. All right, I don't know if you can see up here. But in your joints, this is her shoulder joint. Uh, she obviously is missing an arm here. She apparently had an insurance policy. She cost her an arm and a leg. <laughs> Sorry. All right. And uh, so anyhow, but inside the joints, in your shoulders, your knees, and various joints, there are little sacs, and these are called synovial membranes. They're filled with fluid, and they're like shock absorbers, so that when you get hit and jostled, uh, when you walk and you put all the weight on your knees and ankles and stuff, they help cushion that and take some of the blowout. Now, we tend to overload them with exercise and football games where people get hit by 300-pound linemen, and these can be burst. Okay, they can be destroyed or damaged. Uh, but these are basically just your body's way of trying to cushion the blow when you walk and move and do that sort of thing. And it works pretty good as long as we don't overdo it. But we're people, so we tend to overdo it. All right, and their main job, like I said, is to cushion the bones at the joints. So where they come together, so that way they don't grind on each other and stuff like that or, or hurt each other. Uh, also, we have cartilage in there we'll talk about later that has real smooth and helps slide those joints together so that they don't uh, have a lot of problems. But anyhow, that's basically all the joints uh, membranes we're going to talk about today. So good luck with that. Enjoy. Uh, we'll talk to you next time, and um, don't be a dummy. <laughs> I've already got one. Don't need. You don't need to be. All right. Talk to you later.